Welcome to the Chateau de Lalande, a 16th century chateau in the heart of France. Join us each day of Advent as we get this 19 bedroom home ready for Christmas. We'll be cooking, decorating and discovering Christmas traditions from all over the world. Welcome to Christmas at Lalande. Hello and welcome to another day of Advent at Lalande. And today, as you can see, on this cold and misty day, we've decided it's a good idea to go for a walk because we want to fill the house with mistletoe. In a couple of days time, we're having our first Christmas party, a Christmas cocktail party, and we need mistletoe for that. And then we're gonna come back, snuggle up in the warmth, and I think it's the right sort of day for making a Christmas cake because my fruits have now been steeping for a week. But I'm not too cold because I'm wearing the Latvian Christmas cake. And also I have this amazing hot water bottle, which just drapes quite wonderfully. So I'm snug. Is everyone ready? Yeah. All right, let's go find some mistletoe. So do you think we're going to find any? Yes, I hope so. Well, I'm hoping that that fallen tree that came down that was covered in mistletoe, hopefully it's still alive, but the tree fell a while ago. So I'm not sure. Ah, oh, this is the day for the earmuffs. That's so nice though. It is, I love the mist, it's beautiful. This is where the huge tree fell in the dry moat. It was covered in mistletoe, but we don't know if it will have remained alive on the dead tree this long. And we're going to go and find out because you can see there's a lot more mistletoe up there, but how could we get to it? It's quite you, impossible. Are you wearing the earmuffs by the way that I got you? Yes. Oh, I love them, they're so warm. I can't see any from here. That doesn't mean there isn't any. Look at it taunting us. All of that mistletoe. What? Oh. Yeah, I think I can see two pieces. It's worked! It's still alive. Oh my goodness, here! Everywhere! Oh then you're wrong, right? Then this is Oh look at this bit! Look at that! This is the mistletoe that you kiss underneath. We need kissing at a Christmas party, so we must have mistletoe. You love intrigue. <laughs> <laughs> Putting this down on a piece of mistletoe to free me up to get more mistletoe. Now, can I pull this bit off? Yes! Wow. This is an excellent when, piece. Oh, oh, that's nice. Oh. Okay, this is... No, it's still good. It's still good. The more, the merrier. Because it's not going to survive now the tree is dead. So we can use all of it. So let's leave some to come out just at the last minute, maybe before New Year's as well. But there's so much over there. Oh yeah. Oh. Okay. This is more successful than I thought it would be. Fantastic, thanks Maria. How lucky are we to be able to just come out into the garden and just pick huge bunches of mistletoe. Well, I wouldn't consider this the garden stuff. <laughs> well, this is in the garden. Right, mustn't forget hot water bottle. This is a good spot for it. <laughs> this is really intrepid mistletoe searching, isn't it? Remember the boots I Yeah, I love them. Yeah, but they are super slippery. Oh no. I'm like... Oh, cuz, yes. Thank you. Thank goodness you got back just in time for the great mistletoe hunt. We obviously couldn't have done this without you. <laughs> Next year you have to shimmy up that tree, Anne Marie. Yeah, I was actually thinking. Some fun. <laughs> oh, you know who Nick. could? Yeah. You're so Nick. right. Nick, Nick could do it. Yeah. Oh wow! Next year we can ask him. I'll tell you what. I think Dan though yeah. could offer his assistance. But Why? He needs something else. The With digger. the digger, yeah. of course. <laughs> yeah. No one can collect That's mistletoe hard. without a digger. That's all. He'll probably say we need a bigger digger. <laughs> or, or he'll push it over. Yeah, and then. And then <laughs> Yeah. then collect it. I prepared everybody for a really big walk, an intrepid adventure. But how about we it's go right and check here. on the bees? Run around. There will be more mistletoe near the bees. Maybe we should go and check on them? Maybe we could go near them, but not too, too close, because they're starting to become dormant, because it's getting cold. So they're not going to be going out to forage so much, because mm -hmm. they're going to be using their stores. So you're a resident bee expert. I did a bee course back in England before I came here. I'm supposed to bring my hive with me. You've I've got, got a hive, hive I've as got well? A hive. Yeah, Hang I've got on, the whole shebang. this information is coming out in little tiny bits and pieces. No, I've got the whole shebang. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I've got the hive, got everything. Did my course, got my, yeah. got my cloak, got everything. Wow. My goodness. Yeah. 
But are you telling us that our bees will be asleep? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh. Looks like this <laughs> Just need a tumbleweed to go by. <laughs> I think for the first time ever, we can leave the bees alone because we have our whole new store of mistletoe. We can leave them be. Oh, oh, but it's just not You're not stopping. giving up, you're not giving it's up not on that, stopping. are you? <laughs> I got one. <laughs> Look, there's a really good bit there, but we don't need more, do we? Look. Have you seen what's No, we have one? so much. I love it. Have you seen what's I right? know, that's the one you're shimmying up. Wow. No, we're rich in mistletoe at Leland. A lot of love going around. Mistletoe and honey. You know what we've got back indoors is hot chocolate. Would anyone like hot chocolate? Mm. Yes, please. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, girl. <laughs> That's the yeah. moment we've been waiting for. Nice job, Natty. Yeah. I love the way that it just balances yeah. on top. We don't even have to tie it. It was meant to be. Okay, so the rest we can put up around the chateau later, but first, hot chocolate. Yes. Who's kissing under it first? Anyone who leans across for the salt, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> If you find yourself under the mistletoe with yeah. someone else, you have to kiss them. Yeah. Oh, that's but you the say rule. something about the salt? Well, anyone yeah, reaching yeah. over, I won't do that with my cousin, but yeah. you oh. get the impression. <laughs> <laughs> anyone Come leaning in. into the <laughs> table. <laughs> Ages ago, someone sent us this amazing hot chocolate by Alain Ducasse. Alain Ducasse has, I think, the most Michelin stars of anyone in the world, and he sells chocolate. They're really good. I don't know if you saw when Philip and I went to a Balkan together in Paris, we also popped into the Alain Ducasse chocolate shop oh it's the same it's, store yes, oh, we got same. the little um, whiskey chocolates didn't you get me a giraffe or something maybe we were supposed to have forgotten about that oh. <laughs> <You're> stocking <laughs> i've got a very good memory <laughs> um and i've been looking forward to this but i wanted to keep it till this time of year because it's so much more fun so it's just grated chocolate and apparently we have the instructions here we are supposed to pour a little tiny bit of warm milk onto it and it's the warm milk that melts it and then after that we have another jug of hot milk and each person adds the amount that they want depending on the intensity they want and i think i want like a shot of really powerful hot chocolate oh 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 oh, oh. off 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 poor philip's trying to film and keep i'm oh, sorry yeah this was just rising almost out of the pan um, <laughs> this is your soy milk yes and the proper milk's on the other side yes um, and this is a really, really great excuse to use a chocolatière that I received as a gift when I was maybe 18 from a very close friend of the family. And it's so beautiful. And I don't think I've ever actually used it for hot chocolate. I just look at it in wonderment. I'm going to get it out. I absolutely love this chocolatière. It's in porcelain of Paris and it's really exquisite. It's hand painted. You see it's beautiful. all of the different little birds. Each of them hand painted, but really what melts my heart is on the other side, uh, the name of each bird. No. Yeah, written by hand so that you know all the different types of birds that are on it, even on the lid. There's two little birds on the lid and just underneath oh. tells you which ones they are. This is a... Petit bleu. Petit bleu. Petit bleu and a ce petit couleur. The same with the jug. <laughs> They're lovely. And there are the names oh. of the birds. <laughs> this water just came out. I just washed it. And those of you who saw my video at Christie's will know that I was in love with Catherine the Great's chocolatière, and that had a wooden handle. And you can see it's exactly the same system here. And what's really clever is that it turns the opposite way from the way you would usually tighten it by turning it uh. to the right and loosen it by turning it to the left. But there you would run the risk of, as you pour it, yes. it loosening. Mm -hmm. So it loosens to the right. So ah. that as you pour, you're tightening it. I just find those little details it's really smart. very, very clever. I'm wondering, like, uh, who made the mistake of doing it the yeah, other way? Yeah, a few times, yes. ah, lost all the hot chocolate. And this is the little whisk that sits in it. So obviously you can make hot chocolate with just a normal whisk, but I've never tried actually using this. And I've had this for over 20 years. This was a gift from a very, very dear friend called Elizabeth, who was a neighbor of ours back in England when I was growing up. And she'd had the most exciting, glamorous life to a little girl. I was very young when I knew her. 
just seemed amazing. She'd been growing up in India. She'd been on a tiger hunt with the Viceroy on elephant back. Uh, she had no interest in hunting whatsoever, but that was the sort of life that she led. And it felt, felt very glamorous hearing these stories. And this is a beautiful reminder of her. I think of her whenever I see it. So let's try and make some hot chocolate in it. I mean, how much does one even put in? A lot, I think. Yeah. I think I might put most of this in. I've actually put almost the entire pack of hot chocolate in there, except for a little bit that Philip took out for his soya milk. Now I have a jug for the hot milk, which Philip has very kindly been preparing. I'm gonna pour this on, because I should have had that in there in the first place. Okay, we've learned something already. Make sure your whisk is in first, because it's quite hard to get it through the chocolate otherwise. And they say just a small amount of milk until it's completely mixed. So that'll probably do. We just want enough to melt everything. It's working. What? Look how thick that's getting. Wow. This is amazing. Well, sometimes the old ways are the best. You would know. I suddenly decided there's not quite enough mine. to go around. Try it. <laughs> I don't have a nice too much, so. Okay, I think it needs a little more. Turns out I put a lot of hot chocolate in there. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to know how the Italians make their really thick custard-like chocolate. This feels like a fairy tale. I'm like, I've come in from the cold and I'm by the fire, warming my hand. <laughs> And plotting something evil, that's what it feels like, this <laughs> movement. Mm. Actually, I'm just making lovely hot chocolate for everyone. I've got these lovely hot chocolate cups, and this is the way um, French do the hot chocolate cups. It's just a little porcelain cup with a metal holder. These are pl silver plated. Mary Poppins did all of the silver last week, so they're sparkling and pretty. And I'm trying to make this very strong, powerful, just little shots of hot chocolate for everyone. But I just want to taste a tiny bit first because now that is exactly the consistency I'm looking for. But this might be too powerful. I think it needs a bit of cream, actually. Mm. Something was calling out for double cream in here. So I warmed that little bit of cream and mix that in. And this is what I want, a very powerful shot, but not everybody loves that. Some people, like Philip, <laughs> you've got to see what Philip's created for himself. This is the same chocolate mixed with soya milk with a candy cane, and you went for a slightly longer drink. So that's, uh, by the way, that's a candy cane straw. No! We were sent those. Are you gonna be actually drinking it through yes. that? That's so nice. Oh, now look at that. Can you see now the cream's been added? I think finally I've worked out how they make that Italian hot chocolate that I love so much in Italy, which is like a shot of powerful chocolate. That's it. Is it? It's the holy grail. <laughs> I didn't realize all I needed was to actually use my stunning chocolatier. Isn't that quite literally like your thing? Uh, use the good stuff. I know, and why haven't I used it? Well, and this is also the good stuff. Thank you very much, the person who sent this, because yes, what a combination. Okay, can I try yours? Yeah, 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 it's delicious. You can really taste the peppermint yeah. from this. That's really clever. Okay, let's call the others. And then when everyone's had their hot chocolate, I'm gonna make the Christmas cake. Here we are, here is the little spread. And what we've got is what turns out to be an extremely powerful, aromatic, bitter chocolate, which got a little bit of double cream in and mm. some milk. And a lot of people might prefer it weaker, so you can add warm milk here. So a long drink, or you can have it as short as I'm having, because I really love that. And Philip is leading the way <laughs> uh, in using a peppermint candy cane straw. Oh, wow. And it actually tastes really good. So if anyone wants a straw, yes. that, that's Wait, it's a well. real thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah the straw. Yeah, I thought it was just a straw, straw that looks like the... Isn't it no, no, no. Are you, it's, that's it's insane. It, it, it makes it taste like candy cane. Wow. Oh, I didn't even so know they nice. existed. Yeah. Please help yourself. Great. Thank you very much. There is the chocolate. But it's the same kind of concept as the Catherine the Great one. Exactly right? the same. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You've been and watching the vlog. <laughs> <laughs> Pass the test. Yeah. So. Don't stop. <laughs> um, when I drink this, it takes me back to sitting that, in St. Mark's Square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know those really powerful shots oh, of yes. chocolate that they do. Yeah, my dad really likes those. Mm. Mm. I mean, I'm not sure that the length and severity of our walk warranted 
did. <laughs> oh, chocolate well, I, I took a longer yes. walk with Audrey, so I'm allowed yeah, okay. to yeah. <laughs> And also the success of our walk. I mean, look. Right. Look at this. We That's were successful. We deserve a treat. Yes. And now Natty's not here. She's just popped out to get me eggs. It's really sweet of her because I'm going to make the Christmas, Christmas cake. This is real Christmas elves. You two are amazing. <laughs> the egg pop. <laughs> Would you like some hot chocolate? Yes, please. Perfect, your timing. Emery, hot chocolate? Oh, yeah, fantastic. I was about to pop out straight away. More glue. Yeah. Oh, I have mm. glue now. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas <laughs> crafts have started. Oh, did you notice your glue had gone? Yeah. I can't make you use today. that. I know. I, no I didn't no. put it in the bin. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's super powerful. Lovely. Yeah, do you like that the same way no, as I do? Because I love power. Oh, it's oh yeah, yes. I want it to be, you know. <clears throat> yeah. Hot <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> chocolate is a punch <laughs> to the face. Yeah, you don't want it to be like anemic and a bit. Like, uh, <laughs> you want it to really be a party in your mouth. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's a party. Everyone's invited to. It's brilliant. <laughs> I'm starting to make the cake, and the strange thing is that having put all of the fruits into the jar with the alcohol last week, so many ingredients went in here. You only need four ingredients for the cake once this is done. So I'm putting brown sugar, self-raising flour, butter, and eggs. That's it. I'm just gonna measure these out. Voila. 250 grams of demerara sugar. They don't seem to sell that in France. I have found something that I haven't ever found before here, which is sucre complet, raw sugar, I think, complete sugar. Uh, so I will put this in. And I think this will be a very good substitute. What we're looking for is that dark, Christmassy look and flavor. For any British person, you'll know, your Christmas puddings, Christmas cakes, mince pies, it's always dark. Delia says that you don't need to feed this cake because there is so much alcohol that goes in before. And in fact, with this one, I put the recommended alcohol in and then it just soaked up the fruit, soaked up the rum. And so the alcohol level dropped to about here and I topped it off again and put it back in the fridge. <laughs> so this will be very strong. But I've been reading online about these Creole Christmas cakes and it seems that people do keep them for a really long time and feed them with rum. So I'm sorry, Delia. I'm going to be feeding it as well, so it'll have both. <laughs> and isn't this the rum that you, we got in Barbados? Yes, oh in fact, yes. Whilst I'm getting on with this, I will leave you all with a little trip to Barbados where Philip and I actually went to the rum distillery, the very first rum distillery that was ever opened in the Caribbean, so very historic place, so that you can learn a little bit more about how this most delicious of spirits is made. Welcome to Barbados, which may seem a very unlikely destination for an advent calendar video at Christmas, but in fact, we are here on holiday and realize that there is a very ancient rum distillery on the island, Mount Gay Rum, established in the beginning of the 1700s. And so we thought, well, what better place to go to to source the rum for the Christmas punches? And of course, a special rum Christmas cake. I'm just getting into the spirit of things with a rum punch made with lime juice, nutmeg, Angostura bitters, and rum. Oh yes, let's bring a little bit of this warmth back to our Christmas festivities at La Land. Now this deed is the oldest evidence of the first commercial rum distillery in the world producing Mount Gear rum since 1703. Many do ask, why Barbados? The Portuguese found the island, but it was the British who discovered that Barbados grew the finest cane in the world. That is why Barbados, so gay ass. <laughs> so in front of you are the ingredients used to make Mount Gay Rum. Caramel filtered water, molasses, and then a proprietary strain of yeast made just for us to give Mount Gay its characteristics, yeah? Let's talk about the molasses. It became known as black gold. A lot of people began to grow sugar and get a refinery to get molasses to make rum in the end. They made so much money off the sugar and off of the rum. And that is the molasses. Now for the water, Barbados. We are made entirely of coral limestone, a very porous foundation. We have absolutely no surface water because it's a very porous foundation. Whenever the rain falls, the water seeps through being filtered through layers and layers of coral limestone. That is what goes into our rum from our well. And it's been there for the past 318 years. No one 
can boast of the same water source for the past 318 years. Traditionally, rum was made in the pot still. Now, that is because scotch and whiskey was predominantly made in the pot still. Now, there were obviously African slaves here, but there was also Irish and Scottish indentured servants. And the only spirits that predate us are Scottish and Irish whiskey by some 200 years. So when they came here, they not only brought their palate for alcohol, but their know-how of distillation. And that is where traditionally rum is made in the pasta. These are actual copper pastels used centuries ago to distill Nogue rum. So basically history at its very best. They are almost 300 years old. And you see each and every place that the copper smith struck when he was 318. Now today, we use the same technique, the same machinery, just a little bigger and more shiny. The long bar bum stays in the barrel, the darker, the bitter, smoother it's going to become. Now for most white bums, they are not aged. Just distilled, watered down, and then bottled. You are having black barrel. Now black barrel is our spiced bum, but I go like this because there are no spices in it. It all comes from the barrel. How we do that, we age it twice. First, a lightly toasted whiskey barrel, then again, deeply charred bourbon barrel. So twice the aging, twice the smoothness, twice the barrel, twice the spice. For me, it smells like spices, dried spices, cooking spices, vanilla, cloves, and cinnamon, nutmeg in there. <laughs> now, well, that settles. Mince pies at Christmas. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what it is. Oh, yeah. It smells like my bad decisions 10 years ago. <laughs> We have chosen two bottles, one of the black label, it was delicious, really spicy and I think it will make the perfect Christmas cake. Maybe some mince pies as well and then to go with it, it would be a bit of a shame to mix this one, we got the XO and that's going to be for making Christmas old fashions to have with the mince pies and the Christmas cake. So we're ready. Now. I love the Mangate tour that we had. Oh, so good, so good. Ah, oh, to be back in the summer. <laughs> Look how moist and rich that is. Oh, this is really good. Now Maria lost <laughs> around. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, it smells amazing. It is ready to go into the tin and it is ready to be tasted by everybody in the kitchen. Like that? Does not need to go into the oven first? Do you not eat your cake mixes before putting them in for luck? Um, no. You know, no. all those times <laughs> they <are> big. <laughs> and if any of you want to make this recipe, this is the book that it's in. It's also in Delia's other Christmas book, her older Christmas book, which I have here as well and have been using for years. I do have an apology to make to everyone who's not British, I think, because I didn't realise that you don't have Christmas crackers in America. So I had so many comments on the video last night saying, but I don't understand, were you going to bake the crackers? What are the crackers? So yeah, we were making what we call Christmas crackers, which we always have at the table on Christmas day in England. And this is a Christmas cracker that was sent to us in Caddo, which you are currently editing. editing. So I thought we would show you what a Christmas cracker is. <laughs> so each person, sometimes you do it all together like this. Yeah. Yeah, and every yeah, that's person not fun. pulls at the same like time. Hit each yeah. other in the yeah, shoulder. That's, that's completely <laughs> So usually the person who gets the middle bit when you pull, gets the gift. Yeah. Ready? Oh, I didn't yeah. have a pop. <laughs> Slightly underwhelming. Yeah, you usually like... it, it pops. And this one doesn't have a... Uh... Oh, it doesn't have a snap. I don't that think so. It. But there's a gift, you get the gift. So the things we added to the ones from uh, yesterday... It makes a popping sound. Yeah, like... Yeah, pop. It's a little so fireworks. a tiny bit of gunpowder in there, not much. <laughs> <laughs> not enough to burn that in the shadow. What do we have in this one? So you're supposed to wear these... this beautiful cat mask. Oh. And uh, have. You can show up, so don't, don't pull that. Either one of these on there and play the game of like, who am I? Oh, that's a brilliant idea. Hannah Montana. Hannah Montana was Simba. And Simba. That's like, okay, we must do that. Yeah, yeah, we'll Christmas Eve, we've got a huge box of these, so Christmas Eve, we'll do that. Whoever well, oh. reads this is sweet. So usually it's a terrible joke, but this is really nice. It's just a really nice phrase. It's in uh, different languages. So whoever reads this is sweet, then Dutch. We did lace this leaf. So you're sweet in five <laughs> languages, is what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> so that's what a Christmas cracker is. And you'll see us opening our Christmas and crackers. And we should have crowns instead day. of uh, masks. Oh, I quite yeah. like masks. Yes. Oh, it's a look. I mean, you know, um... <laughs> I'm just taking it out of the oven and it's done. 
and it looks good. Look at that. Squidgy, but solid. So that is cooked. And now I have to leave it in the tin for 45 minutes to cool and then we'll put it on the wire rack. But I'm happy. We are all in the kitchen having dinner and this is about to come out of its tin. Let's see, I think it's worked. It comes out very, very easily with this system. Oh, we can take that base. Delia does it again. Oh, Delia does it again. And then pop it onto the wire rack to cool. And when that is completely cool, I'll be wrapping it in two more layers of baking parchment and putting it in a tin. And we are going to feed that every few days with more rum. We'll put a skewer in and then just pour a little bit more rum over it until Christmas day. And I cannot wait. I hope you enjoyed today's Advent adventures and we will see you tomorrow for more Christmas preparations. Until then, lots and lots of love and Merry, Merry Advent, Advent from Lanarmonte. <laughs>